kings and generals is proud to announce that this is one of the many incredible channels that we've partnered up with for Project Ukraine. Project Ukraine is a playlist dedicated to telling the past of the Ukrainian people to aid them in the present. Your likes, shares and donations to the charity we're collaborating with will have a direct impact in aiding the most vulnerable citizens of Ukraine. We have partnered up with the Babin Yar Holocaust Memorial Center in Kyiv, which was bombed by the Russian troops at the start of the invasion. Today, the Foundation has transformed its projects, refocusing its resources and efforts on purchasing and delivering humanitarian aid to civilians and evacuating people from combat zones. In the first week of April, the center provided over 7,000 food baskets to patients and doctors at Kyiv hospitals, to bomb shelters in the Kyiv underground, as well as to people with disabilities and elderly people who cannot leave their homes. They also provided targeted assistance to 3,354 people, delivering specific medications, food and hygiene products on individual requests. We hope that viewers would consider donating to this noble cause and help with the humanitarian situation in Ukraine. Many in the Turkish and Crimean Tartar community see him as a traitor, but was he only a product of difficult circumstances? Shaingirai, the last Han of the Crimean Khanate. Born in 1745 at the Royal Palace in Indirna to Crimean Hanzade Ahmed Garay, Shaheen would spend his formative years in Ottoman captivity like many members of the House of Garay before him. The Crimean Khanate under the Garay family had been an Ottoman vassal state since the 15th century, shortly after its founding by Haji I Garay. The Khanate had for centuries hosted large Tatar and Nogai hordes in its lands and conducted major raids into Eastern Europe, in which they would build for themselves a sizable slave and agriculture economy. However, since the 16th century, the sons and brothers of the Crimean Han were held in captivity in the Ottoman capital as a way for the Ottoman state to educate them in matters of statecraft and military service but also as a bargaining chip against potential disloyal Crimean Hans. This political arrangement would play a huge role in Ottoman-Tatar relations for centuries, as both the House of Osman and Garay would be skeptical about each other's political intentions. After the sudden death of his father, Shine Garay would begin his educational tour in Greece, then Venice, where he would be exposed to Western culture and language, which would shape the young Hanzade's perception of the world. At the age of 20, Shine Garai would be summoned to the Crimean Khanate as an aide to his uncle, Kurum I Garai. During the reign of his uncle, the Ottoman Empire and Russia would go to war against each other, as the latter had ambitions of gaining a warm seaport in the Black Sea, thus putting the Crimean Khanate at the center of attention in the war. However, instead of forming a unified front against Russia, members of the House of Garai would instead enter into a throne competition with one another, which would see the throne switch hands six times between the years 1768 and 1771. During all of this political chaos, Russian armies from the north would conduct military operations in the Crimean Khanate and the neighboring Ottoman vassal state of Moldavia. A 65,000 strong Crimean host led by Kaplan II Garay would be decisively defeated during the Battle of Larga, and two weeks later be defeated again during the Battle of Kagul. During these decisive defeats, many Crimean nobles and even Hans began to question the logistics of fighting a losing war against a superior enemy. It felt like the days of horse archery and Tatar hordes were now gone, now taken over by Russia's organized units of line infantry. Many in Crimea, including Shine Garai, believed in the full independence of the Khanate from Constantinople and even touted beginning secret negotiations with Russia in order to preserve the state. In 1771, Russian forces would enter the Crimean Peninsula and defeat the armies of the Crimean Han during the battles of Perukop and Kaffa in fast succession. After these major defeats, many Crimean forts in the region would surrender without a fight, and the Crimean Han would flee to Constantinople to live a life in exile. Shine Garai's brother, Saib II Garai, would become Han, 
thus making Shahin Gurai Kalgai or an excellent lion to the throne. The two brothers would then start talks with Empress Catherine of Russia in the hopes of retaining the status of the Khanate as an independent nation. It was also during this period that Ottoman armies from the Black Sea began to be rejected from entering Crimea by the Crimean state, thus signaling an end to Ottoman rule in the region. A Crimean delegation to the Russian capital of St. Petersburg was conducted by Shangurai, in which, in a grand symbol of declaring a new Russian Tatar alliance, he would be seated next to Empress Catherine in a lavish ceremony. Many in St. Petersburg were impressed with the conduct of Shaheen as he was a man interested in Western culture, a trait he had gained during his educational tours to Venice and Greece. Being unable to reinstate its rule in the Crimean Khanate and losing the war effort in the north, the Ottoman state would go into peace talks with Russia which would lead to the Treaty of Kuchikai Narnchar, thus ending the war in a Russian victory. It was agreed by both sides that the Crimean Khanate would remain an independent entity, but in reality the state would be swallowed up into the Russian sphere of influence. Shortly after the peace talks, Saif II Garai would be overthrown from power by his cousin, Devit IV Garai, resulting in Saif II fleeing to Constantinople and Shaheen to Catherine's royal court. The new Han wished the Crimean Khanate to once again be an Ottoman vassal state and sought the protection of the Ottoman Sultan, but after less than two years in power, a Russian army would arrive in the region and depose the Han in favor of Shahingarai. At the age of 32, Shahingarai, with the help of his Russian benefactors, would become the new Crimean Han. Now that he was directly receiving a pension from St. Petersburg, Shine Gurai would introduce modern reforms to the Crimean Khanate, harking to his old interest in Western culture. Upon ascending to the throne, Shine would reduce the power of the local religious clergy in the region and put loyal men into high positions of power in his new imperial court. He would begin the construction of a new Western-styled model army of 20,000 men and start to move the capital of the Khanate from the traditional city of Bachisarai to the coastal trading city of Kaffa. The small Crimean navy was resupplied with Russian munitions, but perhaps Shine's biggest move was abolishing the feudal rights of the Crimean nobility and began confiscating their lands in an attempt to centralize the Khanate to his rule. These swift changes would cause a massive uproar amongst the Muslim population of the region, as many felt that their way of life was being threatened by a tyrant ruler who was in partnership with an infidel state. A giant revolt against Shangarai would erupt in Kaffa, which would see the Khan's forces defecting to the rebels. Shangarai would once again flee to Russia. It was also during this time period that Russian and Ukrainian migrants started to settle in vacant plots of land in the Crimean Khanate as a part of Russia's policy to russify the region. As political tensions in the Crimean Khanate rose up in 1779, the Ottoman Empire and Russia would sign the Treaty of Aino Levak to solve the crisis. To begin with, both parties promised not to interfere with Crimean politics and ensure that the Crimean Khanate would be an independent sovereign nation. In addition to this, Russia promised to withdraw its troops from the region within three months, while the Ottoman Empire promised to acknowledge Shangri as the sole ruler of the Crimean Khanate and gave Russian merchant ships the right to sail through the straits. Shangri would survive the crisis and remain in power. The Crimean Han would then restart his reforms, but this time, instead of a great revolt, the Muslims of Crimea would migrate in the hundreds of thousands to the Ottoman Empire, fearing Russian influence in their country, thus destroying the Crimean economy in the process. After years of economic unrest, Shangurai's brother Bartirgurai would rise up in a pro-Ottoman revolt and usurp the Crimean throne. Shangri, once again at the steps of Empress Catherine, requested Russian help to reclaim his throne, which would be granted. In 1782, a Russian army would storm the Crimean Peninsula, killing over 30,000 Tatars in the process, and reinstated Shangri back on the Crimean throne, a clear violation of the Treaty of Aino Levak. 
Unlike in the past, the Russian army did not leave the Crimean Khanate, but rather further established itself in the region by taking control of the major towns and cities in the area including the Crimean capital of Kaffa. Seeing that he was now only a Russian puppet ruler with no authority in his own right, Shangurai would resign as Khan as the Crimean Khanate was officially annexed into the Russian Empire thus finally giving Russia access to the warm waters of the Black Sea. Shangri would live in St. Petersburg as a guest of the Empress for four years, but in reality he was a mere political prisoner for the Russian state. In 1787, the last Han of the Crimean Khanate was allowed asylum back to the Ottoman Empire, where he would be put under house arrest in his childhood city of Edirne. Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid I, who harbored a great grudge against Shangurai for his responsibility in the Ottoman loss of Crimea, had already made plans for the execution of the former Crimean Han. While the Grai household lived in Edirne, Shain was sent to the prison island of Rhodes, where he would be later executed, thus ending the life of the last Han of the Crimean Khanate. Even though Shine's head was sent to the capital for public display, the House of Garai would be allowed to live in Ottoman lands until the fall of the empire in the 20th century. Russia's illegal annexation of Crimea and the creation of the Russian Black Sea Fleet in 1783 would result in another disastrous Russo-Turkish war for the Ottomans, as they would slowly lose their naval superiority in the Black Sea to Russia. The loss of the Crimean Khanate would have a great impact on the Ottoman Empire in their journey into the 19th century which would see them exposed to the north by an ever-growing Russian Empire. To this day, Shain Gurai is seen as an unpopular figure amongst many Turkish and Crimean Tatar circles as he is commonly given the appetite of traitor for his relationship with Russia. But was the fall of the Crimean Khanate preventable? Or was the state always doomed to fall to Russia? Make sure to write your thoughts and theories in the comment section down below. Once again, I would like to thank Kings and Generals for inviting me to be a part of this awesome collaboration project, and special thanks to Hick Ministry for introducing me to the project in the first place. I will leave another link down below to Hikma History's video about the history of the Crimean Tatars, which I co-wrote with them down below. If you like this video and wish to see more content in the future, please remember to like, share, and subscribe.